Welcome back, fishing friends, to Wind Against Tide. I'm Joey Fernand, Dave standing in the studio. Woo! And tonight we have a species-specific edition of our wonderful podcast for you. We are going to talk about squid. And we have in the studio Peter Ferguson, Fishing with Fergie. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. Squid, hey? Yeah. I, you're, heard, you're, I heard you caught one once. I caught one, I think once, yeah. How? How did you do it? Oh, I fluked it, Dave. No, squid. Well, love them. Love them, mate. Love them. Do you think squid could be the most chased species in the world? Nigh yeah. universe? I reckon you're probably not far off it, Dave. Because squidding or the techniques we now use all originate from Japan. So there's obviously quite a few squid there. Nearly every state in Australia seems to have squid. They're accessible to everyone because you can catch them land-based. So I guess that explains why there's such interest in them. Why well, do you love squid, Peter? Well, I'll tell you something first, Dave. This mm-hmm. is a little stat that I was given by somebody a while ago, and I, look, I've got to take it as gospel because the source was quite good, that one of the large squid jig manufacturing companies, Japanese, right, really big brand, you know where their top three markets go in the world? It goes in this order, I was told. It goes Japan, Korea, Melbourne. Melbourne, wow. yeah. Right, so Japan, Korea, Melbourne, not Australia, not Victoria, Melbourne. Yeah. Third biggest market in the world for one of the largest Japanese manufacturers of squid jigs. That's unbelievable. That is really cool. <laughs> so we're, we're up there, guys. We're, we're playing the World Cup stuff, you know what I mean? We're, we're kicking goals. Yeah. I world mean, leaders in squid fishing. We are. We're world, no, we're world leaders in buying squid jigs, Joe. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> it's done on volume, mate. You walk into a tackle shop, go into complete angler in Dandy That's and true. St. George. It's, it's all the colours of the rainbow. 100%, mate. <laughs> I think the tackle store owners must have bloody loved when the whole squid jigging thing really took off because I've seen, I've been in there and I've seen guys that probably barely fish but they've got to have every colour, every size of each squid jig like it's a collector's item. And I bet those tackle store owners were just rubbing their hands with glee when that whole thing kicked off. I, I know a guy a few years ago I used to hang out with, he had like 350 squid jigs. And I'm like, what? You know, 350. Ooh. I'm lucky to own about 10. On, I, I probably own 10. Mm. On one of our previous podcasts, we had the famous little maker Peter Pakula, and I think you asked him a question about what's the best colour to catch a fish on and he and he gave some kind of glib remark like, well, they all work. <laughs> <laughs> it's the action. It's the sink rate. But you know what? You've got to support these tackle shops. Get in there. Go and see Georgie in there, Dandy, mate. You need to own 15 different squid jigs. You've got to buy them. Yep. But there's the, like just with squid jigs, you know, I, I can think of oh, heat cloth, um, UV attracting, um, like what what would be some of your favourite um, squid jigs, Fergie, that you're using at the minute? For predominantly, as I fish at Western Port, predominantly for my squid. Okay. It comes down to colour choice. When people say, what colours you got? I use red, red, red. Yeah, <laughs> then you- I use purple. Green's very good. Um White, I know white, everyone had this big thing about the old, was it 14T in the Shimano's years ago? Yeah, yeah there's like a clear white one. That I, was... I never did any good on white jigs. I When I go squidding, if I'm squidding like I was a couple of days ago solo, I had three rods rigged, two sleepers, one was a green jig, one was a purple jig, and I was casting what, a red. What, what's, a, what's a sleeper rod for people that might not, not uh, get that term? Uh, a, static, a static rod, sitting in the rod holder. Drifting along where, say, if I'm in three metres of water, I've got enough line out to keep that in that bottom metre of the water so it's not snagging up. Yeah. Some days you catch nothing on those lazy jigs. Other days they dominate. So so would you just have that on a, um, a like a vertical weight and then like it comes off on a dropper loop or how no, would you do I literally, like Joe, that? unless the drift is fast, as long as the drift is under or not, I've got just that jig cast at the back just wafting around behind the boat. Oh, right, just as, as straight out of the packet. Yeah, tie-on. exactly. Yeah. I'm trying to keep my drift ideally at about 0. 0.7, 0. 0.8 of a knot, so around that 1K an hour. Mm-hmm. If the drift is fast and I can't slow it down and I'm desperate for them, I'll put a little, just a little piece sinker like you would in Port Phillip, yep. about 300 mil in front of the jig. Okay. A Pat Noster also works too, but that's just what I do with a sleeper rod. Yeah, nice. So it's just the action of the boat basically working that rod in the rod holder and, and that one often is the one that gets the bite 
over the ones that are getting worked furiously. Yeah, and that tells me, Dave, when the day that I'm getting the sleepers are catching, you know, more squid than my casting, I slow down the action on my casting rod, all right? Some days the squid are just in that little, they're a bit timid and they might follow that sleeper jig. They might follow it for five minutes and you don't know. He's followed it and finally grabs it. But other days, sometimes the sleepers just get absolutely smashed and they howl off. But if I'm casting and it's a tough day and the sleepers are catching more squid, I will slow down the action on my casting rod and I'll start to catch more squid on yep. the casting rod. And it's funny, sometimes it's the opposite. They're, they're not switched on and you'll find if you speed up your retrieve and make it more aggressive, you'll actually get them going. I remember one occasion where nothing would work but a fast burn yep. straight across the top, then stop, let it sink. And every time they'd come flying in and attack it. But if you worked it normally, no bites at all. Now, Joey's actually funny. We've just been talking about squid colours and there's a little clip playing in the background. King Kong, Donkey Kong. Yeah, out with Suraj the other day, he showed me his two squid jigs. He said, I use black and I use white. <laughs> I said, okay. He said, that's it. Black and white. Is he a Collingwood okay. supporter? What's that? Is he a Collingwood supporter? No, he's not. But just one, generally he finds one of those two colours does the job for him. And uh, I think that, you know, it's a confidence thing. He's got confidence in those two colours. And more than, often than not, you know, he's using a dark contrast and a light contrast. One of those is probably going to be effective. So, you know, going back to that, you don't need to have 50,000 jigs. Just a few quality colours is probably all you need. Sorry, Joe, what yeah. I think Dave just hit on a really valid point of squid then. You said confidence, right? Because he's got those two jigs, he's got confidence. It's the same with me with red. If I'm using a new colour and I haven't had a, a bite in or a squid on it in eight or ten casts, I'm changing the colour. It just means I probably haven't drifted over the patch of squid yet. Mm. But if you're so confident, like I'm just so confident in this red jig I use, that it never comes off my casting rod, right? And I just know I'm going to catch squid on that. But if I put that purple on or a green on and I did the same amount of casts, I'd catch squid too. Mm -hmm. It is a real confidence thing. Yep, and, and also if you're not catching squid, there's so many factors that can be the reason you're not catching squid other than it's some special colour. I mean, it can be stage of the tide, it can be location, it can be water clarity. So maybe we run through a few of those things, Pete. What are you looking at when you go squid fishing in terms of uh, tidal, tidal stage? Water, well, water clarity is a big one. If the yep. water is dirty, go somewhere else, find clean water. The squid just don't like dirty water. But tidal, um, I know people got good mates who swear that the top of the top of the tide, the top of the flood, is their favourite time. It's actually my least favourite, Dave. I've got a simple philosophy. I like to fish the last two hours of the run out tide and the first hour of the flood for my squid. It's a little bit like if you do soft plastics fishing for flat, it's very much the same thing. The squid are a predator. There's also less water for the buggers to hide in. And those squid will be sitting on those drop-offs, you know, that one where it drops off to two and a half or three and a half. Mm -hmm. They're an ambush predator. They'll sit there waiting for the bait to wash off with the falling tide, just grab an easy meal. Mm. And that's what I do. I drift on those, like Quail Bank in particular, there's two and a half, three and a half, four and a half metre drop-offs. I'm drifting on those drop-offs to find where the squid are. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, obviously any bit of – structure or something's going to aid the squid in hunting is going to be advantageous for them and that's where you need to be concentrating i mean even if we're looking at this video we've got playing right here there's a hard weed edge where it goes sand to weed yep that's an area where squid are going to hunt there's going to be bait fish coming out from the cover of that weed into the sandy patches and vice versa and that's where you know you're looking basically for an area that's going to concentrate the squid population more than just fishing open ground so as pete says with a drop off and the bait pushing out over it, that's where the majority of the squid are going to be waiting to get an easy feed. So that's where we concentrate concentrate our fishing efforts, I suppose. Exactly. And it's, you know, right there, if you've got a really big weeded area, you think, oh, there's so much weed here, the squid are going to be here. To be honest, they're probably more on the edge of that weed patch because, as Dave said, the, the bait fish will be coming along the edge of the sand and that as well. And they just want to be able to just shoot out and grab it. Yep. You know, get an easy, easy feed. Yep. So we've covered... We like nice clean water and we like to fish the bottom structure. What sort of depth are you mainly looking at, Pete? Uh, in Western Port, I'm predominantly fishing two to five, Dave. 
Yep. Um, so on a falling tide, I'm starting at two, drifting out till I get fives, going back and doing my drift again. And always taking note because a squid will be in a – they'll hang around in a pack. If you get a, you get one or two squid and then nothing, turn, turn around and go back. Always have your drift tracked on. Yeah, you have your track marks on your sounder. Go back over that track again. Yep. I find it – and that's actually a big thing, isn't it, using electronics um, to plot your – where you've been drifting and then – if you get it on a patch of squid, more than likely you can go, go back over that same area and there's going to be a, a bunch more. So that is a very valid tip. And if the drift is fast, on those days that the drift's fast, you know, the wind's behind, you can't slow it down, even with the sea anchor out, mm. I'll keep that drift going until I've caught that one or two squid and I'll mark that and I'll go back and anchor. And yes. then just pep, pepper out 20, 30 casts. The boat will yaw around a bit in the wind or whatever, but pepper out 20, 30 casts in that same spot and get the rest of the bag of the squid. Yep. One thing I will say is with the depth thing, I know that we've all become accustomed to fishing, you know, one to five metres or so, but it's always quite surprising to me just how deep you'll find that squid. I mean, an extreme example of this is way offshore where we often catch them in like 50 metres of water, Yep. big thump in calamari. But even in our bays and estuaries, sometimes if the squid are very tough on the usual grounds, drift a little bit wider and you'll find them in seven to nine metres. Sometimes you'll need to go to a Paternoster style uh, setup to get your jig down there in the current. But that's where if, it, if, they're, if they're not in big numbers in shallow, just try a little bit deeper sometimes and you'll find the main concentration of squid. That's just well, a little a tip one, from myself. A good myself. one on that one, Dave, to go on with Dave's tip, and Dave will probably agree with me, those days that are quite, Dave, that you're finding it very tough to catch the squid are probably also around the full moon. Yep. The daytime in the full moon is a tough time to catch squid. What I have found, and I found it purely by fluke years ago, I got on the phone or something, got distracted, and next thing I started catching squid and I looked, I'm in quail bank, I'm in like six and a half, seven metres of water. Yep. On those full moons, I go deeper. I'll fish six, eight metres of water, like Dave just said, and that's predominantly on the full moon. You'll get a bite in the shallows on first light and last light, but once the sun's up like seven by eight o'clock in the morning, the bite shuts down, go deeper. What about nighttime, Pete? Do you squid fish at nighttime? Yeah, I do. I've actually done quite well early morning in the dark and at night. Darker jigs. Um, so you, that's when I would use the blacks and a really dark coloured purple or whatever. And I use a bit of scent on my jig as well at night, Dave. Yep. And what about boat lights? Because I know when you're fishing jetties, they tend to congregate around the lights because that attracts the hundred percent of My spotlights on my rocket launcher are intentionally a little bit loose. They're just tight enough that I can use my hand to turn them left, right, up and down. Mm. So when I'm snapper fishing, I'll turn them up. But when I'm squid fishing, I angle them out and down on the water and I will put my sleeper jigs just behind the light. So where the shadow is, Yep. because that's what happens at piers and that. The squid will sit back in the where the lights peter out, where it gets become dark. The squid are hunting on that dark line and any time a bait fish swims along near them, gotcha. Yeah. And that's so, what you do with the lights. So it's funny with the lights, the squid don't come right into the the brightness of the light. As you say, they're on the, the outskirts of the light where the bait fish are starting to get attracted to. Yep. And then bam, comes out their, their candle. Um, physiology while, while wise with squid, very interesting creature. Not very long-lived. They're in great numbers um, as long as they're not experiencing undue commercial pressure. Uh, they re reproduce very quickly, so they live for about 12 months maximum. Yep. Yeah, 10 months or so, they say. Yep, and they grow to around about, if we're measuring, and when we measure squid, we talk hood length, so bottom of the hood to the top of the hood. So a, a really big squid is 50 centimetres. So 50 centimetres for a squid is like the equivalent of catching a 20-pound snapper or probably even more impressive, you might say. I've never caught a 50, 50 no. centimetre squid, neither of you. I don't think have you done. No, I haven't, no. I've got 48 and a halves and stuff, 48, 49s. I cannot crack a 50 centimetre yet. Remember, Dave, when you and I did a talk years ago up at Druin? Yeah. And the guy showed us the pictures of those three and a half kilo calamari they'd caught. Yep. But they, they're rare. We've never seen one. No. They they got on a nice little patch there and that was um towards the eastern entrance there of Western Port. So, I mean, that's another thing to touch on, I guess, is – when, you, when you're searching for that clear water, if there's no clear water up in your usual areas at the top of these estuaries or bays, then quite often would you say fishing the mouths of these estuaries is a, a good way to hunt that clear water? It can be. It's it's a little bit funny, particularly if Western Port, Dave, like I was went offshore chasing 
tuna the other day for donuts, obviously, but mm-hmm. it went out there and we thought we'll put a couple of squid rods in, we'll try for some squid at Cleland ah, White and away back in. The squid drift of shame. <laughs> and, mate, 100% because it was rough as guts for a few days and we thought, you know, the tuna will bite after the first day after the rough. And what happened? The water down at Cleland Blight was like milk coffee. It was putrid. Yeah. But it's hard to predict sometimes when it, you... Yeah. Sorry, cut you off. What I did notice, and it's a good little one, I had my boat in Yoringa, remember, for many years. After a big rain, I would come out of Yoringa and I think, oh, I've got to go south. Mm-hmm. I'd go over for a look at Quail Bank. It's gin clean. Mm. They, after the, you get a bit of rain, the top of Western Port, Quail Bank and Tyre Bank to a level as well, are actually very clean yep. after that first flush. Mm. And um, I suppose we're talking Western Port centric right now, but if you were to fish in Port Phillip or say your other favourite area, Welshpool, yep. would you be fishing any differently to what you would be in Western Port? Uh, no. Port Phillip Bay, obviously, the same areas, two to five metres, Mount Martha, all the areas, Frankston, over the weed beds and rubble. Welshpool is the same, and the same techniques work in both. You know what I always found a little bit interesting about Welshpool is majority of the squid inshore, like um, say up the Lewis or along the edges of the channels there are actually quite small on average. Yep. But you head offshore there and you catch the much bigger ones. I've got a mark I fish offshore that I just fluked. I was, yeah, we we're gummy fishing mm. and we we're bouncing a metal along trying to get some flatties on a metal slug and started hooking 40 centimetre plus calamari. And I've marked and I catch in November and that I go offshore and I get 40, 45 centimetre hoods, big two kilo squid. But inside, I don't think I've cracked 40 centimetres yet. No. I've got a 35, 38 centimetre hood's a big squid inside. Look, I think also just with some of those offshore areas, you've got a lot of uh, thick kelp forests and, and whatnot. Uh, but, you know, we've it's it's easier to target squid in the shallow water because you actually can see the bottom and see the habitat. I'm sure if we could somehow see the habitat on some of those offshore areas um, on the ground, uh, it might come up with some more uh, offshore fi- calamari fishing options. Yeah, well, that's exactly it. It's a vast area when you're offshore trying to pick a location that's going to be handy for squid fishing. Um, whereas, you know, when, when we do fish these shallow weed edges and stuff, it's pretty easy to predict where they're going to be, Joey. I'm going to show you a, re- a reoccurring reminder in my phone, Dave. What does it say? Paternoster squid jigs offshore drifting. That is a reoccurring event in my calendar. That I've had it in there and I haven't done it. It's been in there for about four months. That when I'm offshore in 40 metres of water at Welshpool chasing gummies and flatties to put down a Paternoster squid jig because I know there's going to be some bloody big squid out there as I, well. I love that. I actually, <laughs> that, that's that's what I do yeah. um, down down off uh, Flinders there. Some of my favourite gummy fishing down there. Yeah, that's a fantastic tip. Yep. And you know what else you'll catch in these offshore reefy broken ground areas on squid jigs is bloody massive cuttlefish yes have you encountered any of those no not offshore yet but uh octopus dave yeah octopus. Do you'll octopus get offies as well jigs sorry do octopus take jigs they 100 percent will eat a jig 100 percent. that's one of the reasons having that offshore at welsh well i got that reminder because yeah. i want to find some big squid but i want to get some ockies as well oh yep. yeah we get a lot of small ockies at welsh pool when i'm drifting they're not much bigger than your fist they're coming yeah, right. up holding onto the sinker wow and they let go just to the boat and they're great gummy bait Octopus? Yeah. But they're a bit smart to be keeping octopus, aren't they? <laughs> we won't go into that discussion. We're talking about squid. Oh, okay. Sorry. Trying to get out of uh, the shame of killing intelligent species, are we? <laughs> <laughs> um, what about bait jigs, Peter? Do you use bait jigs or are you too I'll fancy? I'll be honest, Dave, I don't even own one. Excuse Yet it's funny. Me. Western Port has been pretty tough over the last couple of months for squid and a few guys I know are saying, yeah, we got eight squid yesterday, people. We got seven of them on a baited jig. I think they come into their own realm when it is tough, but I just, I just can't do it, Dave. I, I, love, like I it. love it. I call it the prong. I got the the widening yeah. prong. We get a bit lazy, <laughs> and we do just use the um, the artificials because it's easy. You've got them in the boat all the time. Just whip them out, start oh. casting. But bait jigs sometimes can be very effective. Oh, it's fun. The 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 widening prong bait jig you. You put it, put a big no. uh, polystyrene no. float out, and you watch it pull it under underneath. No, no sorry, Joe, it's I love boring. It. It's boring. I honestly, <laughs> the reason I enjoy squidding because so you because you got ants in your pants, Peter. You're always going to be doing something. I've got to be doing something. But <laughs> in Melbourne, the one thing we actually don't have a lot of is lure fishing. Like, yeah, you know, particularly in Western Port because of the weed, it's hard to 
And it's not like you're up north, everything's a lure, right? Oh, yeah. That's one thing I enjoy about squidding is I can just spend two hours casting, working, casting, working. So if up north I'd be doing that for, you know, for long tail tuna or trevally, whatever, you don't do that here. It's, no. one of the, it's one of the very few full-on days you spend two or three hours only casting lures. But I'd say with back to the jig, uh, the bait bait jig, you do get some bloody monsters I've seen on the on the silver whiting on the on the prong there. Yeah, you do. Would, would you agree, Dave? <laughs> no, you do. And what about burley? Because I reckon I heard at a um, it was actually at a Paul Carter uh, squid talk because he is the squid talking master. There was mention that they apparently don't have smell receptors or taste receptors or something oh, like really? that. Yeah, I've heard that as well, and I think it was the same thing. And look, maybe they don't. I've asked a couple of squid, can you smell? They don't answer me. They're a bit secretive. Well, they, they manufacture the paste for it. So, but can that? Yeah, but that catches fishermen, I think, Joe. Um, okay. Can it actually? Um, can they taste it more in the tentacles? Do they? Maybe they're not smelling it, but they taste it. But you and I've done it, Dave. We've fished together like that with with Brendan years ago. Anchor it up, put a burly pot down, catch squid. I've anchored up on the edge of a weed bed and literally you could see them all just like trail. fanned out sitting around the trail. Yes. So whether or not they're smelling the burly itself or they're actually hunting the bait fish that are coming into the burly, that's, a that's another point. question. I, I tend to think they are in some way smelling. Or tasting. Or Maybe they're tasting it though. There's you know? something to do. Yeah, it, it certainly does attract them. So... Burley, I think, is a great addition when you are chasing squid, especially in that dirty water. You can burley and use bait in the dirty water and you'll tend to still catch them. Yeah. If you're um, – and also, too, if you're out there, you know, if you're going to go have a big snapper session and you want some couple of squid and the drift's fast, anchoring up, putting your burley pot down because your drifting's fast anyway, put the burley pot down, half a dozen mushed up pillies in there and just cast your jigs around. You'll get your one or two squid that you need – to go snapper fishing. It's a, it's a good tip. It does work. Especially for those days where, uh, you know, talk about Western Port and any of these estuary bays, though they, the water clarity is bad. So that is a really good tip. Yeah. I like mm. that. Time of year, Pete. When's your favourite time of year to catch squid? Traditionally, um, May, June, July. Really? Yeah. Unusual. Fish is very good in Western Port. I'm stocking up the bait freezer. And uh, this year was tough, but you know what? A lot of the time I catch some really big squid in that June, July, into, into August even. Yeah. That's the most the time I normally catch more 40-centimetre hoods. Yeah, okay. This year I haven't. This year has been a, it's been a tough one this year in Western Port. Yeah, it's, it has been very tough. But I, I would actually say now is – because now is the major spawning event for squid for the year. It's a spring thing. Yep. Um, and I, I went out the other day. I saw the first sort of signs of that starting to happen where, you, you know, you get your multiple squid following each other up and they're all – you know, they've got breeding. chunks missing out of them and you can tell they've been breeding. So, um, but yeah, I, I would say now, but you are right, that that May, uh, March, May sort of time, you do tend to get a lot of big ones and also you tend to get a lot of big ones further up in the estuary for some reason. I have caught more big squid in the top of Western Port than I've ever caught going to Flinders. Yeah, right. Flinders is the home of big squid, everyone says, right? Oh, it is. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever caught a 45 centimetre plus squid at Flinders, but I've caught hundreds of them on Quail, Tyab, Middle Spit, etc. You know. Yeah, I've, I've caught some big ones at Flinders. It's uh, like ten to twelve meters, and uh, there's a lot of uh, Vietnamese fishermen in uh, in tinnies that uh, seem to get in and amongst it. And uh, when it's on, <laughs> you can you know, have the, a ball down there. <laughs> I reckon I have lost more squid jigs at Flinders than I've ever lost anywhere else in Western Port. Can I say one of the things that when I've had people on my boat that don't fish a lot. One of the main things to teach them when they're squid fishing is how to unsnag a squid jig because yes. people don't understand uh, that there is a method to get, I would say, 90% of your squid jigs back. Number one, I would say fish a fairly heavy leader. I'd use 20 pound. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I really don't think going any lighter than that is much advantage and 20 pound will allow you to get most of your jigs back. But when you do get to like flinders especially, these areas with the thicker kelp, um, which, by the way, I find you get a lot of these big squid on that nice thick kelp. Uh, when you do get your jig stuck there, it can be very hard to get it off. But a technique I like to use is a whipping technique. Yep. So it's almost like you are working your jig. But what works with that is you're whipping it, but on the drop down, as you drop your rod tip, the jig gets time, the sinker falls, and 
when you whip back up, the sinker in the jig comes back up. It so you're, in, it you're wiggling it. it. Yeah. You're wiggling it loose. If you just do a straight pull, it's the weed is going to be strong enough to a lot of the time break your line because you're not using that whipping motion to dislodge the barbs. I did that with a mate the other day. He got snagged up with one of my jigs, of course, and he was about, I'm looking at him going, you're going to break that. Can I just grab that rod for a sec? And he mm. goes, why? And I've just gone whip, 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 and it's just come out. Mm. And he's like, oh, I was just going to keep pulling. I said, yeah, and I only used 12-pound fluorocarbon. Then. It was just going to pop it. Yep. I, I, it happened the other day when I was out with Suraj. It happens all the time. People look at you like going, yeah, all right, you have a turn. And it's like two seconds, bang, bang, squid jigs off. Carry on fishing. And it's all about getting that slack in the line and then whipping it back up. Well, you want to try and get your squid lures back, especially when they're, what, what are they now, 25 bucks a pop for a premium squid jig? And it's always your favourite colour that's snagged. Joey, I buy so few of them that I honestly couldn't even tell you what the going price is in the what, moment. But What I've also found, Dave, too, when you're on that heavy kelp, if it really snagged up, like if I'm off cows and it gets snagged up, I will just... Put the boat in, start the motor up mm. and drive back around it. Just open the bay alarm and drive around. So I'm back on the opposite side, the way yep. you've hooked it up. And eight out of ten times, you'll get it back out that way as well. Yeah, or, or a straight pull. If you get straight on top, top of, it, of it, you'll be able to pull it straight yeah. up and get it off a lot of the time. Now, here's a question directed solely at you, Joseph, and I suppose we can contribute as well. Do you eat squid or do you use it for bait? That is the million dollar question. Oh, I, I love eating them, and, but, you know, you guys were just mentioning this year. I, I, haven't, I haven't done too much squid fishing uh, this year, but, no, I absolutely love eating them and not too many actually go into the frying pan when I go fishing with any of you blokes. I know. It's actually a rare occasion where we do fry them up, but by God are they del- delicious, Joe. It is too valuable a bite. Yeah, but it tastes better than the things that you're catching. I know. I would have agreed with you a few years ago, but now I'm just kind of into eating things. But you think that <laughs> if you wanted a calamari to go sword fishing and you mm. want a big one, it's thirty four ninety five a kilo. Oh, it's 50, And a big squid, one and a half kilos, mate. It's a $50 <laughs> bait. I know that. But you know what? You don't have to use, cal- you don't have to use calamari for swordfish. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, use, uh, I'll use fish or, or arrow squid and eat the calamari. Yeah. But eat no, you know. Everything does eat squid in the ocean, hence why I suppose they're fast growing. Um, they live a fast and loose life, and they are pretty much put on this earth to be to eat and to be eat to be eaten. Hundred percent sounds like me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Um, a comment years ago was they they say they are the largest biomass in the ocean. Yeah, I'd believe that. Yep. Yeah. They say ninety percent of the earth is covered in squid. Pretty much. <laughs> Is that where squid games <laughs> or water, come from? One of those two things. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, quite an intricate look into the the life at, of squid and how to catch them. I think we've covered some really interesting stuff there, actually, guys. Pete's got something else. I had one more thing, and it's an interesting yeah. one. And go back to remember Adam Reuter, yep. great fisherman. And I remember going to one of his talks. I love going to people's talks and picking up a note. And he said there one night, everyone was talking about one point eight and two point five squid jigs, right? Little squid jigs. And Adam put it the best way I've ever seen. It. He goes. You put a bait jig out, as Joey is talking about. What do you put on it? You put a big silver whiting, or I got mates that put 30 centimetre grass whiting on it. Mm. And you want to throw a little 1.8 or a 2.5? Come on. You're putting a bait out that's eight inches long. Oh, yeah. Give me a size five or a size six squid jig in a decent brand. I'd throw it. Yep. You know, big squid. I catch little squid, little baby squid still on a 3.5. Yep. I only buy 3.5s because I'm fishing tidal estuaries. You want yep. that extra little bit of weight to let the jig sink in that t- current? It helps. Yep, and um, that was another point that I did think of earlier, so I'm glad you brought that one up, Pete. But, yeah, I think if you think about it, squid are trying to get the most meal that they possibly can for the least, least energy. Yep. So they're going to prefer to hit something that's a substantial uh, size and going to give them more nutrients rather than try and chase around multiple smaller things. And that, that's the same thing for a lot of fish species, actually, in my opinion. So sometimes it's worth going bigger. Maybe. Mm. Joe knows something a little bit something about going going bigger. <laughs> what are we talking? No, about? that's <laughs> it. <laughs> no, that's interesting because you see some of the um, you know the Port Phillip squid fishermen. Uh, you know, 
especially around like Mornington and Frankston, you know, these tiny little uh, jigs back in the day, but I guess there's absolutely no tide at all in Port Phillip. And there's lots of little small squid around those piers too. Yeah, that's the thing there. They're, they are, Is that an exception to the rule? They are majority tiny squid. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think one of the things, once again, I picked up at one of those information nights was if you think about it, why do we get bigger squid in Western Port and Southern Port Phillip than you get, say, in the northern parts of West uh, Port Phillip Bay particularly? Yep. The squid's only got a lifespan, they say, of, say, 10 months, 11 months, whatever it is, right? Mm. When they're If they're in a current area, they're exerting more energy to, to live, right? Mm. Just to, to swim against the current and everything takes more energy. So if you're going to exert more energy, you're going to take more energy in, aren't you? Mm. So those fish, those squid in Western Port and Southern Port, Port Phillip Bay feed more aggressively and will eat bigger, will chase a bigger meal because mm-hmm. they're using more energy, aren't they? Yep. So therefore, in their limited 10-month lifespan, they do grow bigger. And that's one of the, and I think it made good sense. I don't know of too many big squid that get caught in the top of Port Phillip Bay re- consistently. No. And the other thing is potentially there's a lot more bigger predators in the current filled southern end of the bay rather than the north. Yeah. So maybe the big, they need to grow big. It's a bit yeah. like Mr. T or Arnie, you know, they, they're they going to get big, they're going to they take a lot more fuel in mm. and work out mm-hmm. and get bigger, don't they? Yeah. Same with the squid. He takes in more fuel, he works out that energy, he grows bigger. It's a muscle. I like that. Yeah. Hey, uh, one other thing, um, I, I know we were sort of wrapping up, but things keep springing to mind here. Uh, tackle, Pete, what rod and reel are you using for squid? I'm using, well, obviously, it's an Atomic, Dave. I'm an ambassador for them, but I love the rod. I use uh, You've a, already breached your amount of sponsorship shout-outs today. <laughs> anyway, I use a 6 to, I use a six to 14 pound, so that's sort of 3 to 5 kilos. Yep. Very stiff graphite rod. Yep. And do they have the special, like, squid guides No, the, the, the one I'm actually using, Joe, is just an estuary series. They do do dedicated squid rods, which are great, but they're 8 foot, 8 foot, you know, like 8 foot, 8 foot it's 2 and big. stuff. pretty big, yeah. Great for land base. I don't like eight foot rods in the boat. They're too big. I break them. I hit them on the rocket launcher mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But I just use a seven foot high modulus graphite, fairly stiff rod. So you're using a fast taper rod? A very fast taper rod. Right. Because a lot of the squid rods are specifically designed to be a slow taper to absorb the lunges of the squid. Right. The rods I use, the good thing about it, I'm using the same rod for whiting as I'm using for squid, as I'm using for salmon. Yeah, that's 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 a fair point. You've you know, you can't take a specific setup for every species that you might come across. And I use a, I use a little snap clip on it, Dave, a little twist clip. Yeah. Because when I'm finished squidding, I just roll it off and just on with a swivel, which is my whiting ring. Oh, you, you, the same squid, rod. The squid don't mind the little snap. No, nah, no, nah, not at all. Very small snap clip on there doesn't affect I've the way. I've seen them the because it's it's great when you want to change colours quickly and not have to trim up the knots. Um, yeah, like that. We've seen you tie knots, Joey. It's not good. <laughs> uh, they're idiots, squid. They don't care about a snap clip. They just want to eat the thing. <laughs> <laughs> if they're hungry, yes, they are. Yes, they can be the easiest thing in the world to catch, or they can be the most frustrating oh, at times. They can be so bloody frustrating. <laughs> uh, anyway, I hope that. All you guys listening took a little bit out of that chat. I actually did, and I'm sure Joey did, and maybe even Pete did. I did. Amazing. I just uh, we need some more garlic aioli for when we eat some for next time. I think so, Joey. I think we'll be crumbing them. (laughs) Joey, if I showed you how many is in my freezer at the moment that are eating quality, you wouldn't be happy, but you're not getting any. Okay. We know where you live. We know where you live. (laughs) We'll be coming for them. (laughs) All right, guys, we're going to wrap that one up. That one up for tonight, a very enlightening chat. Thank you very much, Peter, for coming on. Enjoyed having you in the studio. As always, Joseph Fernand, thank you, sir. You stay classy. Good night, all. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Squid's always.